fire. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Oakland Center Midweek Oasis Wednesday night service. My name is Paul Pursuti, and I'll be your host tonight. And we're so, so very glad that you decided to join us tonight. Uh, what is Oasis and why do we call it Oasis? Well, it's because it's the midway point of the week where we can gather together and get refreshed between Sundays. Our intention on Wednesday night is to present a gathering um, with the speaker um, on the topics that we represent every month and that it be informal, intimate, and rich. So with that in mind, what is our theme? Our annual theme is Wonder, Wonder Everywhere. And our monthly theme for September is Living Everyday Wonder, focusing on work. Now, I know that sounds dreadful, but um, it hasn't been. It's been enlightening all month long. So, and we're only just a couple of weeks into it and we've got a lot planned um, for the rest of the month. If you're joining us for the first time, we welcome you. If you're watching us on our, our YouTube channel um, in the recording, make sure you visit our homepage and explore it. It's all brand new. It's been uh, modified and upgraded and there's a lot of icons. They call them memes. I call them an icon. And you can click on that will lead you around. Um, look for also on the homepage information about our Village News newsletter and you can sign up for it with your email. <laughs> you'll get it once a week and it will tell you everything that's going on at the center and how you can attend. If you haven't done it already, we're going to ask you to do it now and turn off your camera and your microphone. Um, if you can do that, um, that will improve the quality of the transmission when our speaker comes on and please stay tuned for our special and important announcements at the end of the program tonight. So, as I said, we have a, a wonderful program um, planned for you and a, it's a little bit of a surprise. And um, I'll introduce our speaker in a minute, but we have someone that she has requested to open us in prayer because we never start any, any event or any activity or any meeting at Oakland Center without starting with prayer. The most important thing that we can do tonight is have prayer. So she asked our own Reverend Sally Bartholomew to come in and do the opening prayer tonight, and she'll be doing the closing prayer as well. We're blessed to have you here with us, Reverend Sally, so I turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Paul, and it is a blessing to be here. So I invite us all to come into this gathering of like minds and like hearts and allow our awareness to focus in on the one, the one thing that is happening now. As we recognize this one, we know that love, peace, joy, wonder is a quality of this one. This one is living in through and as each of us. It is that which makes us alive, brings us to life, brings us to that place of wonder and love and joy and light. And so knowing that there is this one life, that we are of it, I speak my word this evening to bless this evening. I know the conversation, the discussion, the talk will be very deep and rich and bless each and every one of us as we participate in this process, whether we're listening or speaking or sharing, we are blessed to be here now. And I give thanks for this evening, knowing it's already done in spirit, that we are uplifted by being here. And so I release this word, letting it go to the law that says, yes, it is done. And if any of this resonates with you, please join me in saying, 
And so it is. And so it is. So it is. Thank you, Reverend Sally, so much. We'll see you again mm -hmm. later in the program. So our speaker tonight is just the epitome of fabulous in my mind. It's practitioner Constance Chapman, and um, she's also our administrator here at church. We get to work very closely with Reverend Jerry, her, the three of us on, on bringing Wednesday nights. Um, she's so important, not only for Wednesday nights, but for everything that goes on in the center. So we're very fortunate. She has been able to carve out some time just for us tonight with the presentation. She'll be speaking on living your dream. So Constance, I turn it all over to you now. Thank you, Paul, and I'm glad to see everybody here. So before I actually start the talk, what I want to do is I want to share that there's three things that today uh, that are important about today. One is that it's the International Day of Peace. Uh, when all conflict is supposed to cease for 24 hours. Now, I just want to know, has anyone had conflict today? Has anyone gotten through the day without conflict? Now, it doesn't have to be armed conflict. It doesn't have to be fisticuff conflict. But has anyone made it through the day without any conflict? I know I didn't even make it out of bed this morning. I mean, one of the things that I, I keep telling myself is don't read email before you get out of bed. And I always forget and I do it and so but the nice thing about um, science of mind is is that we know that we make mistakes and then we just can change our mind and start again so that's the first thing the International Day of Peace and also today is the day before the fall equinox tomorrow is the, the day uh, when the equinox uh, takes place tomorrow at 6 47 p.m. And so tomorrow, the day and the night are equal in length. It's one of the two times in the year when the day and night are actually in balance. And the rest of the time, it's not. So the rest of the time, we're always in motion. So people who um, uh, uh, are Earth-based often see this as a time when, when it's a time to just stand still and to really... Um, Accept that 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 the balance that is uh, that that the balance is right here and right now. And the third thing is that today's my birthday, and that I decided to share it with you. I wanted to celebrate with you. And I was born on the full moon two days before the fall equinox. Um, so when a full moon occurs, uh, the moon is opposite is directly opposite the sun sign. So one of the things that uh, it's taken me a while to recognize is that um, it took me a long time to be able to actually access my emotions because the emotions come from the moon. And I didn't, um, I didn't know, well, first of all, I grew up in a family where emotions weren't allowed, so who knew what they were anyway. Uh, but, um, but because of, of uh, my, my moon where it's situated, it took me longer to get to them. So that's when one of the things that I've been working on all my life is just being able to get balance between uh, my emotions and my intellect. And so the subject today, living your dream, is about developing passion for the work that you do. And Reverend D. Jacqueline uh, Edwards set a beautiful tone. She started this discussion on Sunday. Um, and one of the things she said is that we have to know what our passion is. And then when we do know what it is, we have to know we need to bring that passion into our work. Um, and there are lots of definitions of passion. But mostly it's considered to be an emotion. And it's a strong liking or desire for or a devotion to some activity, object, or concept. And Revelyn Jacqueline referred to two thoughts about living the dream. Do you love, do what you love and money will follow and know your worth. So, so there's a relationship there between money and worth. But let's look at this because worth is actually 
it's not I wouldn't call it a God quality because I don't think worth even comes into God energy because um, that God energy is whole perfect and complete within that uh, everything is worth everything is worthiness so worthiness is is just what that energy is so one of the quotes that we had this week came from Ernest Holmes and it says with an invisible intelligence to guide and an immutable law to direct let us take our place in any legitimate activity and thus cause our dreams to come to full fruition so it's really important to look at that between worth which is the spiritual concept and money which is the effect so we've got cause and we've got effect and if the focus is on effect instead of on the cause then it can get very easy to slip over that line of legitimate activity and I think we see a lot of that in the world these days because people don't understand that because what what's really true is is that cause is always greater than the effect but if you're not aware of that then effect can lead you places that you shouldn't really go or you may not want to go um, so from a science of mind perspective we want the cause worth creating the effect the money and so um, we all have the same amount of worth there is no such thing as no one got more worth than another person we all came in being totally worthy whole perfect and complete so the question then becomes what's getting in the way of knowing your worth and doing what you love and having that money follow maybe it isn't maybe you've already done that but I know that for me this is a question I've been pondering for myself for several years I've known the theory and I certainly know that I was worthy but what I noticed is that when I was working for an organization and I really believed in them and I believed in the cause and what they were doing I had absolutely no problem promoting that promoting the work I did promoting myself as an agent of that but I've also been an entrepreneur and when I was an entrepreneur when I was even though the work itself was as, as valuable as the, as the work an, an, uh, an organization was doing I was not able to promote myself and um, and so I've been asking myself, I've been just sort of letting this question sit, what's been getting in the way? So is there anyone here who has trouble promoting yourself, who has trouble really acknowledging to the world your, uh, your worth? If you do, can you um, uh, just make, uh, uh, use a reaction? I'd like to know if I'm the only one here. Uh, I guess I am. Oh no, Sabrina, thank you, and Sally. Okay, I've got a few people here who, who, who are with me on this one. Um, and but recently I had several revelations about this. I got some real wonderful insights, and I'm gonna we're gonna do some exercises tonight that I hope will help you get some of this insight as well. First, I recognized that both my dad and my mom had an unspoken theme of sacrifice concerning work. That is that their passion had to be sacrificed for the greater good of the family. So my dad, my dad was uh, one of the first uh, uh, in his family to go to college. He, uh, he got his, uh, he, he was a CPA and he, um, it was, and it was really important money was very important to him and so he was on the corporate track he was he was on his way to I think in his dream and his his passion was to become a CFO of a large corporation and and that's the track he was on then when he was when my grandfather was 52 he died suddenly of a heart attack and so my dad um, stopped doing what he was doing and he started he he ran the business that my grandfather had had along with his brother and it was about 10 years ago that I recognized what really that was 
is that because my grandfather had been an insurance agent, my dad gave up his dream in order to make sure his mom had residual income. Because in the insurance business, the only way you get residual income is if you keep those, um, uh, those insurance policies active. So he, he sacrificed his own passion for what, what was his mother's need. And my mom, um, she was a woman of, of her time, you know, and she, she was an artist and um, uh, she got married. She had five kids and she was also, uh, in the church that we went to, she, she was the Ruth of that church. So she ran the kitchen on a volunteer basis. And at one point when she was in her 40s, the church decided to hire someone to run the kitchen. And my mom really wanted to do it. And my dad refused to let her because it just wasn't, it would have been, for him at that time, it would have been an insult to his manliness to let his wife work for money, even though she worked her you know, she worked really hard just doing it for without money. And I, I really think that that, so my mom gave up her passion um, to keep my dad happy. So I noticed that that, that was a theme in both of their lives. Um, and secondly, I recognized that I was taught at a young age to keep quiet, to not talk excitedly or at all about what excited me because to do so would make me a bragger, a boaster, and so on. So, um, and that was very common for women of my age. So, Paul, uh, Peter, can you show that slide? So, you can, this is two, two pictures of me. The one on the, um, on the left is me at around three. And you can see at that age, I had not yet learned that, that lesson very well. I was just still really full of it and full of myself and ready to tell the world about it. Um, when I was seven, which was uh, four years later, you can see the change that I was, I was quiet. I was, had gone within myself. So that was very common for women of my age, and it's still very common for anyone who grew up in a family with secrets. Because when there are secrets in a family that they don't want out, you're taught very, at a very young age to keep your mouth shut. So that's okay, Peter, you can take that down now. Um, so I'd like to do an exercise, and this exercise really helped me get in touch with um, some of these revelations and so I'm hoping what I'm what I'd like to do is hope that they work for you too. Usually we would do this by journaling but um, we're going to do something different tonight. We're going to do what I call verbal journaling and there are four questions um, and uh, let me just put them in the chat. So there's four questions for my dad, and these are for you to ask yourself and to think about. For my dad, money was. For my mom, money was. For my dad, work was. And for my mom, work was. And just let yourself free flow and let this, um, let uh, the, um, what comes, comes. So what we're going to do is we're going to break into uh, small groups, groups of two, and you're each going to have four minutes to just verbally journal on these four questions. So you have about a minute per question. And just let come out what comes out. Don't censor yourself. Don't stop it. Just allow that to happen. And then we're going to come back and, uh, and talk about it. So uh, I, I don't think we have anyone on the phone, do we? We have everyone. I don't think so. Okay. All right. Good. Because sometimes it's hard for people on the phone to know where to go. Okay. But that's fine. So, but I want to do something before we do that. Because I want us to activate our senses. Because often 
you know, in science of mind, we can get very heady. We can get up here and we can start thinking about these things. But often a lot of information comes from all of our senses, from all of our senses. So you can follow along with me. Uh, you can turn, your, turn your, your camera on so that I'm not the only one looking foolish here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to activate senses. So we're going to start as I'm going to do it. So let's start with our nose. So you can just blow out. <laughs> blow out with your nose. <laughs> and then just let the energy go round. Come on, Paul. Let's see you. <laughs> and then we're going to... Um, activate our ears so you can flap your ears you can let the energy move around them and the mouth and get the energy moving and then the throat which is where we often stop ourselves from saying stuff just just sort of let the energy move there you can swallow you can um, there was a time in my life when I realized that I was so stuck here that I would have to, um, in order to say things, or sometimes I'd have to lie face down with my face in a pillow so that no one could hear me until I could learn to actually say things. So, and then our heart, our heart's a real important place of energy. So you can put your hands there and vibrate your heart. Get some energy going there. And then the right and left brain. So we want to move our hands back and forth alternatingly so we can get the energy moving back and forth between the, the two sides of our brains. The third eye, which is right here in the middle of the forehead. And also our genitals. We forget about everything below the waist, and yet that's a very important sense that we have, that, that, that our genitals... It doesn't always, sometimes it misleads us, but nonetheless, it's an important sense. So you can just, <laughs> yes, Paul, I see that. <laughs> and then last, the skin and, the, and touch. So you can just, you can touch yourself, hug yourself. Yep, rub your face, good idea. Is that Freya? No, yeah, Freya, good, yeah. <clears throat> and so now, now let's go into the breakout rooms and, and uh, talk about those four questions, now that we've activated all of this. Okay, okay. so Pete. A little bit. Here. Okay. You're going to stay in here. Hopefully everybody else will go somewhere. Yeah. Okay, good.
There you are. I put you in a room by yourself. Um, I had to put you somewhere. I'm going to send a message to everybody in another minute asking them to change partners. Can hear you. Did you pause the recording? Oh, no, I didn't. Thank you. Okay. 